Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you had a fantastic week and you're ready for today's adventure. Now, before we get started with our warm up, I wanted to quickly recap what we did last time. If you remember, we were in Australia and we met our cool kangaroo friend, Cleo. Now, we'd already had to do a scavenger hunt to prove that we were good detectives, but she wanted us to pass one more challenge before she would give us the clue from Carmen. What was that last challenge? Well, we had to create our own versions of her best friend, Kitty the Koala. But first, we had to use the clues she gave us to figure out what kind of animal Kitty was. After we put our brains together and figured out that Kitty was a koala, we were able to get our stuffed animals, our toys, our costumes, our imaginations, and our art projects to show Cleo that we knew Kitty was a koala. And Cleo loved everything that we did. She loved it so much, in fact, that she gave us our next postcard. And for this place, I think we'll have an easy time figuring out where we're going. But just in case, I came up with a few clues. Now, before we get to those clues and revisiting that postcard, I want everyone to go ahead and take a big deep breath in and let it out and stand up and find some space around you so that we can get ready with our warm up. All right, we're gonna get started with the moose song. So this is a repeat after me. Say as I say, and do as I do. There was a moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. See me way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh way oh. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Sing me way oh way oh. Way oh way oh way oh. Drank his juice with care, but he had it in his hair. He drank his juice with care, but he got it in his hair. Singing way oh, way up, oh. way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh. He's a sticky moose, and he's running on the loose. Now he's a sticky moose, and he's running on the loose. Singing way oh way oh, way oh way oh way oh way oh. Way oh, way oh. Way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh. Very nice repeat off. Go ahead and give yourselves a big round of applause. And shake your hands this way. And this way. And pat yourself on the back. And on the other side. And say, good job, self. Very nice. So now that we've warmed up with the moose song, we're gonna move on and play some magic rock. So when I say magic rock, magic rock, very nice, I see all my magic rocks forming. Magic rock, magic rock, I turn you into bears. What kind of bear are you? Are you a big grizzly bear? Are you a cool, calm, collected polar bear? On the count of three, I want you to shout out what kind of bear you are. One, two, three. Ooh, 
lots of different types of bears. Very nice. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into lions. Very nice. And does your lion have a nice big mane? You can give a shake as you're walking around. You're king of the jungle. You're just seeing what's going on. Very nice. And on the count of three, I want everyone to give me a nice big roar. One, two, three. Whoa, very nice roars, everybody. Awesome, okay, magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into snowmen. Are you a frozen snowman that's stuck in the snow? Or are you a magical snowman like Frosty or Olaf and you can move around and sing and dance? Ooh, lots of fun singing and dancing snowmen. Very nice. And on the count of three, I want you to strike your best snowman pose. One, two, three. Ooh, very cool. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into airplanes. You can fly around. Maybe you're getting ready for takeoff or you're landing. Or maybe you're flying over the ocean. Very nice. And on the count of three, I want everyone to shout out one thing that they can see from their airplane. So maybe it's trees, maybe it's water, maybe it's houses or cars, whatever it is, one thing that you can see, okay? One, two, three. Oh, we're flying over so many different places. That is very cool. All right, magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into fish. Maybe you're a big fish. Maybe you're a teeny, teeny, teeny little fish. Maybe you're just floating along, swimming, relaxing. Maybe you're going really fast. Very nice. And on the count of three, I want you to shout out what color your fish is. One, two, three. There's so many pretty fish. What awesome colors. Very nice, everyone. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into students sitting crisscross applesauce with a bubble in your mouth. Awesome. Very nice magic rock, everybody. Now, before we say goodbye to our warm-up time, I want us to do some stretches and our shakedown. Okay? So make sure you still have lots of nice space around you where you won't stretch and bump into anyone or anything. All right, and if everyone can find their way to standing up and take a big deep breath in and let it out. All right, we're gonna start by stretching one arm over the other. And you're just gonna pull it up like this. Very nice. We're gonna hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Let that go. All right. And now with this arm, we are going to do three big arm circles. Okay. And you can go forwards or backwards. Either one. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. Very nice. And now we're going to do three big arm circles the other way. Okay. One, two, three. Very nice. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other arm. We're going to stretch across. And we're going to hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. And now we're going to do our three big arm circles. One, two, three. And now the other way. One, two, three. Very nice. And so now what we're going to do so we're going to try to lock our fingers together. And if we can't, you can always just grab your wrist. And we're going to lean forward. We're going to leave our feet where they are. And we're going to lean forward to stretch our shoulders and our back a little. Very nice. And we're going to hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Now we're going to roll our shoulders back a little bit. 
Very nice. Just a few more. Three, two, one. All right, so now we're gonna put our arms out like this. We're gonna make circles with our elbows. Very nice. And then we're gonna do three more and then go the other way, okay? Three, two, one. Now roll in the other way. Awesome, three more, three, two, one. And now we're gonna put our arms all the way out to the side and we're gonna do five big arm circles going forwards and backwards, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Very nice. All right, so now we're gonna put our arms out at our side. We're gonna stand with our feet a little more than shoulder width apart. And we're gonna lean over. Like we're trying to get something and it's just so close, you can almost reach it. Lean, stretch, 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 stretch. And back to the middle. Now we're gonna lean the other way. It's so close, it's right there. Very nice, and back to the middle. And now we're gonna lean side to side a little faster, okay? So we're gonna lean over and in the middle and over and in the middle and over and in the middle and over middle 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 freeze very nice you can put your arms down shake them out a little bit all right, and now we are going to stretch our legs. So I want you to grab your ankle and hold it up. And remember, if you find yourself struggling to stand on one foot, that's okay. You can totally put your other foot down. Take a second and try it again, okay? Awesome, and we're gonna hold it for five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Very nice, now we're gonna do the same thing with our other leg. We're gonna grab our ankle. Very nice. We're gonna hold it for five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. All right, so now we're just gonna tilt our head to one side. Make sure you're taking nice deep breaths. We're gonna hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And we're gonna roll our head towards the front and to the other side. We're gonna hold this for a little bit. Very nice, and holding it for five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna just roll our head in a little half circle to the front. We're bringing our chin to our chest as we roll from side to side. Awesome, we're gonna do five more. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome, and so now what I want everyone to do is take a nice deep breath in and raise your arms above your head and let it out. Just sort of sway side to side, like there's a nice breeze and you're a flower and you're just hanging out in the breeze. Awesome. And then on the count of three, we're gonna take a nice deep breath in. We're gonna let it go and we're gonna reach for our toes, okay? One, two, three, breathe in and out. Very nice. And remember, if you can't quite get your toes, that is okay. I want you to reach as far towards them as you can without it hurting. We're gonna hold this for five, four, three, two, one. Very nice. Now I want you to take a nice deep breath in and as you do, I want you to stand up straight again, okay? Here we go. Very nice and let it out. Awesome, all right. So now we are going to do our shakedown. 
So remember, we're gonna go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, with our arm, our arm, our foot, and our foot, all the way from 10 down to one, okay? So nice, big breath in, let it out. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, you have 10 seconds to shake it out however you need to. Here we go. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Very nice. Now, I think we are plenty warmed up for whatever today's adventure brings. Now, I want you to get your thinking caps on because we are going to hear some clues about our next destination and figure out if we know what country Carmen is telling us to go to. Get ready, here we go. Here's the postcard that we got from Cleo. In case you forgot, I'll read what it says again. Hey there kiddos, look at you go. You followed me down under. Now it's time to head home for a surprise. Carmen. Now, I know that saying that we have to head home is a really big clue. But just in case we still couldn't figure it out, I found a few more. This country was started in 1776. The capital of this country is Washington, D.C., which is where you go to school. And this country has 50 states. Now, I think that we all can tell what country this is. So how about we all shout it out together on the count of three. One, two, three. The United States. Nice job. We figured out that we are going back home to the United States. Now, as we get ready to get on our plane, remember I have all your passports and your luggage. In our passports, we got the stamp for Australia. So now we have Italy, India and Brazil, Egypt and Australia. We've been so many cool places. I can't wait to see what happens when we go back home and find Carmen. Now, before we hop on our plane, we've got to start drama time. So on the count of three, I'm going to toss over all the drama remotes, drama eyes, drama ears, and imagination keys that you may need. Get ready to catch. One, two, three. Nice catch. All right, we are going to start by taking our regular eyes out with a pop, pop, okay? One, two, three, pop, pop. Very nice. And now we're gonna put our drama eyes in with a shoop, shoop. One, two, three, shoop, shoop. Very nice, make sure those are working. Awesome. And now we're gonna get our drama ears going with a click, click. One, two, three, click, click. Very nice. And now, we are going to get our keys out and we are going to turn on our imagination brains. We're going to do this on the count of three with a whew. All right, one, two, three, whew. Very nice. And now the only thing left to do is get out our drama remotes and hold them over here and over here and up here and down here. And now 
on the count of three, we're going to push play in slow motion. One, two, three. Play. Very nice, everyone. Now I want you to make sure those arms are out nice and to the side. And on the count of three, we're all going to start leaning back for takeoff, okay? One, two, three. Very nice. We're leaning back as our plane lifts up off the runway. Awesome. And you can go ahead and stand up nice and straight. Very nice. We're going to hold this for five, four, three, two, one. And you can put your arms down because we have reached cruising altitude, which means we're high enough in the sky that the pilot can put us on autopilot. So, while we're hanging out and relaxing on our plane, I thought it'd be a great time to read a story. So, if you want to see the pictures, stay close by. But if you'd like to take a moment and relax and listen to the story, you're more than welcome to find a nice comfy place to hang out and listen. Paul Bunyan, retold by Carol Otolenghi. When the stars start brightly twinkling in the night sky, Lumberjacks begin to gather around the campfire. Soon, they start telling tales. Before long, someone mentions the name of Paul Bunyan, the greatest lumberjack of them all. Now, folks say that Paul was the biggest, bounciest baby ever born. Every day, he eat five dozen eggs with 12 buckets of oatmeal and drink 15 gallons of milk. And that was just for breakfast. Paul grew mighty fast. By the time he was 12, he was taller than his folks' house. Why, he was so big that he used a small pine tree for a toothbrush. And all the ladies of the town would have to knit for one week solid just to make him a pair of socks. I guess that's why Paul's ma gave him such a sharp talking to when she heard that he used his sock as a fishing net. When Paul was old enough, he set off to explore the forests that covered the land. One day, he was caught in a snowstorm. Now, normally, this would have been no big deal. Paul had been caught in plenty of snowstorms, but this snowstorm was different. It was so cold that the snow turned a beautiful robin's egg blue. Paul tramped through the fluffy blue stuff. Suddenly, he saw a tail sticking out of a snowdrift. Paul pulled on the tail, and out popped a big baby ox. That poor baby ox was so cold that it had turned blue, too. Paul bundled it up and carried it to a nearby cave. Paul decided to take a break from his exploring. He set up housekeeping in the cave until the baby ox got better. No one knows exactly where Paul's cave was, but it had a smooth, sandy floor. A little creek ran through the back of the cave, full of cold water and plenty of wriggling fish to eat. The baby ox grew and grew. Paul got tired of calling it baby ox, so he shortened its name to babe. Babe's name was the only short thing about that ox. It was 42 axe handles high. No one could guess how much it weighed, but when Babe ran, the ground thundered so loud that folks ran for their umbrellas. Paul and Babe tramped through the woods. Back then, the forests were as thick and crowded as the bristles on a hairbrush, but that was quickly changing. Pioneers were headed west. They built barns and houses and wagons and all sorts of other things. That meant they needed wood. Paul became a lumberjack. Every time he swung his axe, ten trees would fall. Paul piled the logs onto Babe's back to take to the sawmill. Paul thought it might be easier to float the logs down the river to the sawmill, but the river was mighty crooked. Our logs will get jammed in the river bends, Paul told Babe. Paul tied one end of a rope around Babe's harness. He tied the other end around the river. Pull, babe, Paul shouted. Babe looked at the river. Babe looked at Paul. Then Babe sat down. Okay, said Paul. Pull and I'll give you enough sugar lumps to fill a canyon. That river was pulled straight in no time flat. For a while, Paul and Babe worked on their own. Then Paul started a logging camp. Of course, Paul's camp was a mite larger than the average logging camp. Why, folks say that a boy could start walking at one end of camp and grow a two-foot beard by the time he reached the other end. No, 
Naturally, the camp needed ponds for drinking water, so Pa and Babe dug the Great Lakes. Sourdough Sam was the head cook at the camp. He made flapjacks, stew, fried chicken, and spinach casserole. The loggers hated spinach casserole. But when Sam changed its name to Muscle Maker Spinach Casserole, they ate it up every bit. Yes, indeed. Sam was a mighty good cook. His flapjacks were fabulous. Every morning, the kitchen staff strapped bacon to their feet. They'd skate on a griddle as big as an ice skating rink. When the griddle was greased up, Sam poured the flapjacks. He used a crane to flip them over. All the loggers loved Sam's flapjacks, but Johnny Inkslinger loved them most of all. Johnny was the camp's bookkeeper. He paid all the bills and kept track of things for Paul. Johnny wrote so fast and so much that he had to connect his pen to an ink lake. To save ink, he stopped dotting his I's and crossing his T's. That saved 500 barrels of ink every week. Things went pretty well at that camp for a while, but then came the year of the two winters. First, it got cold. Then it got colder. Shot Gunderson, the camp foreman, had all sorts of problems. He rode in to chew them over with Paul. Boss, Shot said to Paul, it's so cold out there in the woods that our feet are freezing off. We have to do something. Paul was big and strong, and he was also clever. Tell everyone to grow their whiskers. When their beards get long enough, they can tuck them into their boots. That'll keep their toes toasty. Shot had another problem. Boss, he said, when I give orders or the loggers yell timber, our words freeze into icicles. No one can hear anything that anyone says. Well, I'll ask Babe to haul all the words to one place, Paul said. When they thaw in the spring, you'll be able to hear what everyone said. That wasn't one of Paul's best ideas. You see, all the words thawed at the same time. So it seemed like folks were yelling all sorts of different things at once. It got a tad bit confusing. After that cold, cold winter, Paul and the rest of the loggers were ready for a change. They took the logging camp out on the road. Babe pulled the camp along behind them. Paul and his crew logged in North Dakota, South Dakota, Washington, Oregon, and all points in between. For a while, Paul dragged his axe behind him because it was resting sort of heavy on his shoulder. But he stopped when he realized the axe was digging a trench in the earth. Today, we call that trench the Grand Canyon. Yep, Paul logged a lot of land. But he knew that the trees were precious, so he always left something. Paul got older. He could still log better than any lumberjack alive, but he decided to retire. One day, Paul and Babe just wandered off. No one knows exactly where they went. Some folks say they headed to Alaska. Others say they went back to their sandy cave. Nobody knows. But if you keep your eyes open, someday you just might meet the greatest lumberjack ever born. The end. Awesome story. And we finished just in time. It's time to land our plane back home in the United States. So go ahead and put your arms out to the side. Very nice. And on the count of three, we're all going to lean forward to land, okay? One, two, three. Almost there, we're about to touch down. Awesome, and we're gonna touch down in five, four, three, two, one. We did it, we landed our plane back home. Now, come on, let's go see if we can find Carmen. Oh, hello. Hi, hello, can't talk, in a big hurry. Oh wait, uh, what's your name? My name's Billy. Let's all say hi to Billy on the count of three. One, two, three. Hi, Billy. Hello, uh, it's very nice to meet you. I have to go, I have uh, to go. We were wondering if we could ask you a question. Uh, we're looking for someone. Really? Uh, who are you looking for? Let's all tell Billy that we're looking for Carmen on the count of three. We'll just say Carmen all together, okay? One, two, three, Carmen. What? No way! I'm looking for Carmen too. Really? Oh my gosh. Do you think that maybe we could all work together? I'm sure we'd find her. I think that would be a great idea. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have any ideas where she might be? I actually do. I have an idea. And 
I'm going to investigate right now. You do? I'll let you know what I find out. You will? Yes, of course. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much, Billy. Uh, we'll meet right back here, and we'll just give you a call if we have any ideas of where Carmen might be. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. Bye, Billy. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Good luck to you, too. That's so great. We found someone who's looking for Carmen, too. Hopefully, if we all work together, we'll find her in no time. Now, I think that since we just found our new friend and we're all going to work together to find Carmen, it's a really good time for us to pause our drama and take a break. Okay? So on the count of three, we're going to pull out our drama remotes and push pause. One, two, three. Pause. Awesome job today, everyone. I think that with Billy on our side, we're going to find Carmen pronto. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.